Yo, Johnny Boys Comics, you won the giveaway from last week. Comic fam, enjoy your hot comics list. Hot comics, get your hot comics. Comic fam, thanks so much for joining us today. We're chatting about the comics defining this generation of collectors at the table virtually with my good friend. His name is Jem from Gem and Collectibles. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. What's up, Comic Tom? Where's Comic Gato? Comic Gato is sitting in the guest chair just staring at me. Like, Comic Fam, I don't have a camera on him right now, but he's giving me some creepy vibes. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Let's jump into this list at number 10. We got some comics to discuss. That's right. This is a book that we spoke about before. It's a classic, iconic cover. Silver Surfer issue four. Thor versus Silver. What else could you ask for? Our point nine two five rider battling Thor for the first time in a comic book also happens to be the second appearance of Mephisto. Let's take a look at some numbers because this book has had steady gains for over a year. You got the brothers teaming up. John Buscema doing the cover. Sal Buscema's first interior inks. Is it Buscema or Buscema? Chat, let me know in the comments down below. But a CGC 6.5, which sold for $955 in April, is up 26%, now selling for $1,200. But that's not all. The CGC 8.5, which sold for $2,760 in March, is up 16%, now selling for $3,200. This comic is thick. This comic is difficult and high grade because of that black cover. And it's wanted for being one of the most iconic covers in the Silver Age. A 9.2 back in January was selling for $3,400. And that's up 38% this month with an all new high of 4,680. Now we do have two beloved heroes fighting it out on the cover for the first time. However, on the inside, it actually only takes place over the course of a couple pages. Most of the narrative focuses on a fight between Silver Surfer and Loki. And since we're on that subject, I wanna also point out, I mean, we've given some love to the Magneto lean in the past, you know? We also have Maestro who really can hold his own on a throne. Well, the first page of this comic book gives us the best. The Loki lean. You know, Tom, I think some Marvel villains in the statue world can give these guys a run for their money. I'm talking Thanos on throne, Doom on throne. Anyway, moving on to number nine, a first timer on the list. Amazing Spider-Man 37, the first appearance of Norman Osborn. Identified as Norman Osborn in the comic book, making his first full appearance, but not in the classic green villainous outfit just yet. Let's take a look at some numbers because this is a book that has been undervalued and underrated for quite a long time. Let's keep in mind like asm 50 the first appearance of the kingpin goes for three times as much as this comic book does and the green goblin is a major villain in the spidey franchise norman osborne is like the lex luther in the dc run as it pertains to marvel and this book keeps going up yeah he's arguably spider-man's arch nemesis some people will say otto octavius but you're right norman osborne plays such a larger role in the marvel universe rather than otto octavius so Definitely got to go with Norman as the big bad for Spidey. Anyway, a CGC 5.0, which last sale was just $275, is up 27%, now selling for $349. A 6.0 back in April 2020 went for $362. That's up 24%, now selling for $450. Then we got the CGC 9.2, which sold for $1,500 in March, up 53%, now selling for $2,300. Comic fam, utilize code Tom101 for a free two-week subscription of the best comic app in existence. You know we're chatting Key Collector Comics. Support what we do and unlock a vast amount of valuable comic book information. Keep up with us and let's chat about number eight on the list. We're talking Werewolf by Night, issue number 32. The first appearance and origin of Moon Knight. That's right, the most specced on of all key issues before there was any announcements, and now we know Oscar Isaac is going to play Moon Knight in the Disney Plus show. We got a CGC 2.5, which sold for $700 in April, up 14%, now selling for $799. That 4.0 back in April went for $1,050, is up 42%, now selling for $1,495. Then we have the CGC 6.5. This sold for $2,025 back in April. It's up 48%, now selling for $3,000. And there's not much more we need to say about Werewolf by Night 32. We've talked about this book ad nausea. Just like number seven on the list, The Incredible Hulk 181, the first full appearance of our favorite Canadian superhero, Wolverine. What we're seeing this week is the lower grade copy starting to price correct, which typically signifies that the higher grade copies are starting to reach their peak. We're probably going to see a level of stabilization really until we see 
any more news surrounding mutants being involved in the MCU. Let's take a look at the 1.0. Entry level grade, $1,300 back in February, up 16%. Now going for $1,507. The 1 1.8, going for $1,700 in February, up 41%. Now selling for $2,400. And then we have the CGC 2.0. This book sold for $2,070 in February, also up 45%. Now selling for three grand. And now we're at number six with some Jack Kirby goodness. First partial team appearance of the Eternals and first appearance of the Deviants. We have Eternals number one. And with November fast approaching, that's right. This movie is coming out in just a few months. Members are trying to secure what spec they can. And for a 9.8 that you can secure for under $4,000, I think there's some potential. It's the first appearance of Icarus, one of the main characters of the Eternals. And we know who's been casted to play the role, none other than Richard Madden, who you'll know as Robert Stark from Game of Thrones. A 9.2 this month went for $381, up 38% in a couple weeks, now selling for $525. The 9.4 earlier this month was going for $600. That's up 20% a couple weeks later for $720. Jim, hit him with the 9.8. Yeah, and I just want to say, as we get closer to this movie's release, you're seeing these record-breaking sales in the same month. I thought that was pretty interesting. Earlier this month, a 9.8 sold for $3,010, and it's up now 26%, selling for $3,800. And it didn't just stop there. We have to chat about the $0.30 cent price variant of this very issue. A 9.4 back in April sold for $1,450. That's up this month by 16%, now selling for $1,677. And to put that in perspective, comic fam, that is a difference in price for a 9.0 of $1,200. Last 9.0 sold for $480 this week. And that's for the standard $0.25 cent copy. Moving on to number five on the list, we have the third of the epic cosmic trilogy that is Fantastic Four issue 50, the best out of all three covers. The best of those three covers? What are you talking about, Jem? This is the worst of the three. We got that poop brown just all over it with Johnny Storm going to college in the bottom right. But no, <laughs> this is a classic battle of Silver Surfer versus Galactus, the third appearance of the Silver Surfer, the second appearance of Galactus. As you mentioned, part of the trifecta, very respected Really, Silver Surfer looks great on the front of this book. However, that brown is definitely a deterrent. And I'll just also throw out there the first appearance of the ultimate nullifier. This is the big reveal of how Galactus was to be stopped in this short three-issue run. And I got to say, it's so disappointing that I kind of take it out on this key collectible for that reason alone. Yeah, it's definitely a convenient plot device on how to destroy this unstoppable godlike entity. But anyway, this is one of those cases of Fantastic Four 48 and 49 just becoming more and more expensive, becoming out of reach for a lot of collectors, so it's just the next best thing. We got the CGC 6.0, which sold for $695 back in April, up 8%, now selling for $750. Then the 7.5, this sold for $1,300 back in April, and it's up 27%, now selling for $1,650. The 8.5 going for $17.95 back in January is up 109%, selling for $3,750. That price moved quick. Now, let's take a look at number four on the list with some anti-hero love, some Mariner issue number one. We have a second solo series featuring Namor, as well as the origin of Namor. And with his first appearance in Fantastic Four being so absurdly expensive and scarce, it makes sense why members are looking at a more affordable option. The 7.5 going for $700 in 2019 was outdone this week, up 54%, now selling for $1,080. Then the CGC 8.5 for this big premiere issue sold for $990 back in April, and it's up 31%, now selling for $1,300. A 9.0 going for $1,450 back in April is up 38%, now selling for $2,000. I'll remind the comic fam that this Submariner spec really took off post Endgame after it was mentioned that there were earthquakes being detected off the coasts of Africa. This right here could be Namor. Is he the one underwater causing a ruckus? Or could this spec lead to Doctor Doom? Which is why we've also seen so much money put towards that Fantastic Four villain. Because Doctor Doom does this very thing as he's trying to secure some vibranium in Astonishing Tales issue number six. Comic fam, who do you want to see first hit the screen? Let me know in the comment section below. And let's take a look at the next one on the list. 
That's right, we mentioned the first full appearance of Logan. Number three on the list has the first cameo. Incredible Hulk 180, we've been talking about this book for a while, and it's continually breaking records. The 9.0 back in March was going for $4,089. Can you believe it? 22% uptick, now selling for $5,000. What's funny is the 9.2 trying to catch up because it sold for $3,000 in April. It's up 67%, but also selling for $5,000. Price correction incoming. When I want to remind the comic fam about the Marvel value stamp found in this comic, it's a Cyclops value stamp, and it's been traditionally the thing that is mattering most as it pertains to the grade, whether it is a complete copy or not. But I want to remind the community as well of the conversation that Gemini and I had weeks ago. With these prices starting to outdo themselves, we suspect that cheaper copies will start to move. And if you're able to secure an incomplete copy for an affordable rate, it may be worth buying, especially with nine O's hitting $5,000. Yeah, it may no longer hold the title Green Label of Death. Moving on to number two on the list, we have Tales of Suspense 52, the first appearance of Natasha Romanoff, the Black Widow. Now, this is an interesting key book that keeps on popping. We all know Natasha's fate in the MCU. It's pretty grim. However, I think combining the upcoming movie and how many delays that's had with the fact that we're in this very hungry for blue chip keys type of market. I think those coupling together while we're still seeing major gains to this collectible, a 1.5 back in 2019 would go for $350. That's crazy. Like for a silver age key and such an amazing character, what a crazy low buy-in that's up 93% this week now selling for $675. And I still think that's undervalued. Yeah, I think the cover is a little bit rough on this one. I'm not really a big fan of her kind of looking all daintily in the background. She's almost dressed up like a French maid or something, right? Anyway, the CGC 5.0, which sold for $1,425 in 2019, is up 30%, now selling for $1,850. Now looking at the 6.5, back in March going for $2,150, up 21%, now selling for an all-new high of $2,600. And some words of wisdom from Key Collector Comics. You know that we are following multiple sites, auction sites, consignment sites, and obviously eBay. And with a 5.0 selling for $18.50 this week, it's worth mentioning that Comic Link had a sale for a 5.5 for $1,369. That's right, for a half grade point up, $400 less than the eBay sale of a 5.0. If you're serious about getting into this hobby and you want to buy and sell key issues, you have to consider other auction houses. There's more out there than just eBay. You have Heritage, Comic Link, Comic Connect, just to name a few. eBay's still a great option as well, and sometimes you will get more or might get a better deal there, but just have an eye open at these other alternatives. And now we're at the list with the hottest book in the world. Comic fam, hit that subscribe, slap that like button. Stay tuned. We have a giveaway at the end of this video. I hear the drums. That's right. We have Strange Tales 169, the first appearance of Jericho Drum. Brother Voodoo. Brother Voodoo's brother, Daniel Drum, died in the first Doctor Strange movie, so it makes sense that they might introduce this character into the MCU, probably with the next Doctor Strange movie. We've seen such an aggressive price hike for high-grade Bronze Age keys, especially after the Silver Age has just skyrocketed over the last 12 months. Let's take a look at the numbers because we have a huge 9.8 to report on. A 9.0 is up 33% from its last price in March going for $900, now selling for $1,200. But the 9.6 back in April went for $3,350 is up 34%, now selling for $4,500. And this this is all drastically low because we have major price correction coming. We're talking about a 440% increase on this 9.8. The prior sale was back in April of 2020. $4,000 is what it went for. Now selling for $21,600. Tom, those lower grades are about to get a bump. Holy smokes, comic fam. Is this an anomaly? Well, the answer is no, because this has happened to multiple Bronze Age keys in the last 12 months. Let's hit them with a few, Gem. Werewolf by Night 32, the first Moon Knight, which we spoke about earlier, a year ago went for 31000 in a 9.8, now selling for 63000 Tomb of Dracula 10, the first appearance of Blade a year ago for a CGC 9.8, went for $12,000. April this year, a 9.8 sold for 25000 
And remember that Uncanny X-Men 94 that we've been talking about for weeks? It didn't make the list this week, but you got to remember that CGC 9.8 sold for 30 grand back in 2010. Now, 2021 sales, $63,000. And since we're on that subject of the new team, Giant Size X-Men number one has to make this list. A year ago, a 9.8 could be secured for $15,000 with a price correction back in March, setting its new height at 68K. Woo! <laughs> Comic fam, what do you think about these crazy numbers in the comment section below? Do you own any of these books? Does it make you want to spec on any other books? Help out your fellow community members. It'll enter you to win a tanker's number one going back in time to save those dinos. Goodness. And as always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said we got two other videos for you to check out we got the podcast back on schedule it's also available on soundcloud spotify stitcher and itunes if you want to check us out there and have a great week